Thank you very much. That was a good introduction. Um, I don't have a very fantastic slides or anything apart from those three little posters. Um, um, as I said, I'm a foodie. Um, I'm a food manufacturer. By profession, I'm a food microbiologist, so I've got nowhere near to connections with what you all are up to and what you all do. Um, we are a company called Just Egg Chill Foods Limited. We are a hard-boiled egg manufacturer based in United Kingdom. That's what we do. We just boil one and a half million eggs per week. We keep the hens very busy, basically. And, and that's what we do. Now, if you take a hard-boiled egg, uh, we all buy hard-boiled peeled egg, or you do it at home, and, and what you do with the shell, and they're all lots of grandmother story, spread it into the, into the garden so the slugs don't come up and, and eat your plants, and all sorts of stories have been floating around. But unfortunately, we have to bin them. And if you imagine, 12 gram of each egg is the shell. And we're boiling one and a half million a week. So if you work it out in tons, you're looking quite a lot of tonnage of eggshell going through the landfill site. And that's where we were putting it for lots and lots of years. A um, Little bit of micro background and a little bit of chemistry. And I'm saying to myself, hey, hang on a second. Eggshell is a calcium carbonate. Why am I throwing these away in a bin? So I said to the council, I'm giving you the best waste on your landfill site, which, which goes away very quickly, apart from your plastic bags. And why are you charging me the same? They said, well, that's the law. So the, it was costing company nearly over 50,000 pounds per annum. Now, a small family company, um, that's a lot of money. If you work it out, multi I've been in the industry for 14 years, so you multiply 50,000 by 14. How much money I've given it to the landfill site? So it was a really, really bugging me. So two, three years ago, I was at a conference and uh, I said to one of my friends who is a professor, and he says, look, my friend, his name is Andy Abbott. Andy, I have this issue, what can you do? He's a professor of chemistry department in Leicester University. Oh, come on, Hank, we love this project. Give it to us, see what we can do. Now, when you boil eggs, right, and when you peel at home, it's guaranteed that you do not get 100% egg shell out. There's always a bit of egg white left in there because you're boiling, you're trying to peel them. So there's a protein left there. There's also an inner membrane inside the egg, right? Well, that's a protein as well. And that is stuck right to the shell. The calcium carbonate of the egg shell is only the shell, not that protein membrane. So it was a challenge for the university to do this job. And with my, some sort of funding from myself, a little bit from EU, they managed to come up with an idea where they can separate all the proteins out of that and purify the calcium carbonate, the eggshell part of it. Now this is on a laboratory scale, it's easy, it's easy done, you know, and you're saying, okay, but there's your project, what do we do next? So the challenge to us was to say, how can we do this? Because we're boiling, every hour is a continuous line process of 16,000 eggs going through the process. And it's continuously peeling it. Now, as you all know, it's a chilled food. If you keep it longer than probably four hours, if it's a 30 degree outside, the eggshell goes off and it starts to smell. Then it's no good to anybody. So it needed to be something which we can come up with on a continuous basis, how to do this and to separate the membrane out of it, completely take all the egg particles out and then purify the calcium carbonate, or the eggshell as we call it. it. Took us six months, lots of hard work, lots of money, but in the end we managed to come up with a plant, and then after building it up, we've now got a plant. Um, that's the second picture, this is the eggshell part, and that's the plant which we have on a second picture on the top one, which we now have the plant which, which separates the membrane, the egg whites, and then the eggshell comes out as a fine sort of that second uh, poster on the bottom picture like that. And then we just do grind it and put it into a powder. 
So the next point was, what do we do with calcium carbonate? And I was told by the, so we did some try, the university says, Pankaj, it says, chalk is used for filler in plastic industry. Now, please, please, please excuse me, I'm not a plastic specialist, so I will not be able to answer any questions whether they use it or not. But that's what I've been told, and that's where probably um, it came in, the duck came in. The, so the whole of this project was actually, uh, uh, university put it on a website and it was supported by The Economist magazine and it went worldwide. And we're getting inquiries from all over the world, how the hell are you, what are you doing it, how are you doing it? And that's why probably the contact with Doug and, 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 and people like yourself. So he says, come on Pankaj, come and tell these people what do we do with the calcium carbonate. So they used into a plastic industry as a filler. And that's what they have been told it's used in for. I don't know the purity of it. We get less than 2% protein at the moment, the, the way we have designed this product. So it's a nutshell. This is the, uh, it's a small story, but it took me about a year and a half to come up to an area which where I'm very pleased to see, say this to you all, that the, the whole project is now up and running. We have got two and a half ton of calcium carbonate, don't know what to do with it. So um, I'm here to this old innovation people of you guys saying, and I've been, and if you then, the next question you'll say, well, Pankaj, how much money are you going to charge us? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea because the, the chalk I've been told is cheap material, but I think where it comes to the crunch is it is cheap material, but it is mined. It comes from the ground, yeah? And I am one of those guys who believe a lot in recycling it. I don't think it's about, we can't keep digging our ground and our earth to just get the product. And there is this still available of product like this. This is where I come from. So that is what we are here at the moment. And it has been used into, we did some trials with the plastic industry. It is going to trial and it has worked out. It, it, uses as a filler and it does work. That is what I have been informed by the university. The research has been done on that subject. So what I've got is to show you just a little. Ah, on a side story, while we was doing this, then we struck another luck. We managed to actually separate the inner skin separately. So I now have another byproduct out of this. It was not the idea what to do with that one, but we separate, we managed to save the inner skin. We're working on the system because there is a research being done in America um, and it has been successful that the inner skin is used as a burn in burns unit. So specifically if you get, well, third degree or second degree burn, you're not supposed to put uh, a bandage on it. It needs to be open because it needs breathing. The inner skin of the egg is, is porous. So it breathes, but it protects. So if you take an egg, you know, I can go on and on about the egg, but excuse me. <laughs> and I, if you take an egg, it's the outer, outer egg shell is protecting it, the whole egg. And the inner skin is holding the egg yolk and egg white in its position. And it's maintaining it. That's why the whole of the egg is porous. It breathes air all the time. So the inner skin has been used and has been identified as, as a burns unit to apply it when you get burned. So it protects your wound, but it can still breathe the air in there. So I'm hoping that is another usage we may find, we, we don't know, we're working on that project. So it's a 10, 15 minute story about the eggshell and how the food industry is coming up around thinking about, because I saw in a, some, one slide somewhere, somebody says tomato skins used for something else. So I think the food industry can work. Now, what is the aim? What's the goal? What am I dreaming of? I'm not dreaming of to be a millionaire to sell calcium carbonate. It never work. It never work, you, you see? Because that's not my bread and butter either. You know, I boil eggs, that's what I do. That's my game, that's my name, just egg, you see? So, what the idea was, that's what the idea is to say, well, if we can, if we can, if we can recycle the materials coming out of the food waste, and there's lots and lots of food being wasted in all over the, all over the countries, there is a lot of usages one could do with it. 
You see, and this this type of research, this type of investment, is the future generations which will say thank you to us for saving the, the earth and the ground and the sustainability, and actually, like mangroves trees, you were saying, it, people die because they took it off for charcoal. Well, if they wouldn't have done that. They would be alive by now and that is what it's all about and that's where I'm coming from on a recycling plant and that's what it is so ladies and gentlemen it's pure and eggshell powder and eggshell we call it eggshell powder um, and any questions you most welcome there are some samples I've got here to show you if you want to have a look at it just do it if you want to but by all means please feel free to ask any questions so what, if, if uh, anyone has questions, but at the same time, if you want to do a post-lunch stretch, why don't you do a little walk around and you can go see the eggshells if you want to see what, what, what is being made. Does anyone have an idea, expert? Can this go in the HP computer shells? Yeah, so there's a lot of concern about TIO2 right now, which is a white color. Would that work? Does that retain its color properties? Say again, so The titanium dioxide is a color, it's white. Ah, okay. It could be used as a as a colorant or filler. Sure. You you are you are almost welcome. <laughs> You're almost welcome. I to be very frank, I think what I would the reason I came here today not only to tell you what good things I need to do, I need to work with somebody to say it's not with an idea to sell it, but with an idea to say what else can we do. Why plastic was interested to me? I'll give you the reasons. Okay, we currently sell two hard-boiled eggs with no preservatives, no nothing, into food-to-go area in supermarkets in all over UK. It's packaged into a food-grade plastic container. Right? Wouldn't it be nice if that plastic container was made from this powder somehow as a filler, so the whole thing will go round, and I can turn around and say proudly. Well, the egg came from me, so did the plastic. Now, that's the reason why I took Doug to say, yeah, I'll come and speak to you guys. That sort of type of challenges, um, innovation, or some big companies I'm looking for to work with and say, yes, we can do it. Okay, it might not be perfect for your company. It might not be 100%. So let's do the next try, next job. That's where I come from, because it's... To me, it will be a nice little thing where I'm packing my own eggs in beyond the plastic, which the eggshell came off from that eggshell. Just, yeah. just, just imagine that. It's, it's a brilliant story for, for all of us. Not, not for the marketing people or for the, or for the, or for the tabloid papers. I'm thinking just us, you know, as an industry.